therapists of Reddit, have you ever been genuinely scared of a patient and why? I am a woman and a therapist working with people with severe issues. I had a client come in for an initial visit whose file read like that of a serial killer. Animal abuse. Torture of other children when he was a child. Homicidal attempts. I had an initial moment of intense feelings of her. And then shifted to what happened to this guy. Turns out that what he went through as a child was more horrible than I could have imagined. We did a lot of great therapy work together and last I heard he was doing really well in his life. As a therapist. I don't give up on people just because they have done and are capable of some pretty horrible stuff. The only one I have felt a little scared of was one who threatened to kill me. I knew she meant it. She had already assaulted a number of other staff. She got sent to a higher security ward and I heard she had broke staff's fingers first day she was there. She held staff and other patients hostage in one of our rooms threatening them but circling the table as if playing with them first. I see violence and aggression regularly and it doesn't faze me but she did. I would purposely avoid eye contact and look straight ahead avoiding her and pretend I wasn't intimidated. As that's what she wanted. Obligatory not a therapist but an EMT. Have one PT that calls us saying he overdosed or meds probably once every 1-2 months. Wears stuff with our logo and pretends to be on our ambulance service. This person used to show up to actual scenes and pretend to be one of our first responders. It took a deputy putting him in cuffs before he stopped. He also has a radio and a pager, radio only receives, and will record out conversations and send them to me. Strangely enough he is actually a very very nice person and if you talk to him without mentioning the ambulance you would never know he has issues. Doesn't scare me but scares some. Of our more experienced crew members so I'm guessing they know something I don't. This was early on in training but a mandated client had dropped acid before the session and it started coming on while we were talking. He didn't want to be there as it was and was much larger than me. 5 feet 0 inches. Once he got to threatening me for being the reason everything was wrong with the world I ended up needing to get up and leave my own office to get a supervisor. I definitely thought he would hit and or strangle me if I stayed. When I was in med school. Our psychiatry attending told that years ago she dyed her hair red. Few weeks later she had a patient who obsessed with redhead women. Patient was thinking about killing redhead women and then putting their plucked head into boxes. So she had two weeks off and patient was carried by another doc. Worked with a patient that complained of reoccurring night terrors about lobsters being boiled alive. He couldn't figure out what was causing them. The fact he killed his gf. Chopped her up and boiled her head didn't seem come to him as a reason he might be having these dreams. My only fear is the system will have to release him one day as they could never get him sane enough to stand trial. My uncle is one. And the answer is yes. Therapists aren't like they show in movies where they only deal with insanely complex and tough issues. Most of the people that come see him just have normal problems that most people can relate to. People seek therapy for a whole assortment of issues. So if someone goes to him with violent thoughts. Or deeply disturbing issues and ideologies. It shocks him like it would shock the rest of us. They are just trained to handle it better than the rest of us. But deep down their reaction to it is the same. Yes. Enough to quit my job. Had high case load of suicidal teens. Most were medicated and low risk. But had two kiddos who had several suicide attempts prior to me. And while under my watch. I was getting physically ill. Not sleeping well. Constantly worried. I tried to transfer them to a higher level of care but our company was greedy and didn't want to transfer them and lose those funds. I ended up quitting on the spot for these kids to be given a trauma focused therapist and get the help they needed. Best decision for both myself and those kids. Not a therapist but a school counselor, small young female. I have a student who is 6 feet 4 inches with emotional behavioral issues. Reading his social history made me cry because of all the shit he's been through. So. Of course. I have a soft spot for him. But his anger gets out of control and it can be very scary. He punched a pole right in front of me once and narrowly missed my face. I looked at him in the eyes and sternly said do you realize you almost just punched me in the face? 
He snapped out of his rage and apologized profusely. I wanted to hug him and tell him everything was going to be alright. Edit. I messed up the last sentence and rewrote it. Worked residential for 20 years. Had only two kids scare me. One put his baby sister in the freezer. She was found quickly and was okay. He was charming. A good looking kid and quite clever. Also no history of trauma or abuse. Serious serial killer vibes. One was horribly abused and somehow figured out I was pregnant. I wasn't showing at all since I was fat. He would just stare at my stomach. I asked to be moved to a different group. First kid was or still maybe a case study for students at the local big university. Edit. To add why first kid was scary other than the horrible act. In my first semester as a practicum therapist I had a gentleman client bring a large hunting knife to session one day, he had it in his waistband in the back. He revealed it halfway through our session. He had been referred to our practice for anger issues. Another client. This enormous dude. Confessed to punching a sleeping infant in the face and head repeatedly because he had become jealous of it. Then one day he comes into session. He seems more calm than usual. And as we discuss the previous week's session he tells me about how much he hates his wife. And he had incidentally bought a gun to go deer hunting. We are in SoCal. That was the last session we had before he stopped coming. I still think about that guy a lot. I hope that babe is okay. When in doubt. Report. Not a therapist but I used to be friends with someone with borderline personality disorder and munchausens. She couldn't keep a therapist. It wasn't until late in our friendship that I realized just how mentally ill she was. She lied all of the time. Her efforts even with her therapists were with the sole purpose of being seen as a hero. When therapists would tell her that they weren't able to help her and she needed someone who specialized in BPD, which she didn't think she had, she'd be furious. I genuinely worried about her therapist and anyone around her. There was a time I even let the therapist know what she was saying to see if she wanted me to report it to the police. The woman was very, very scary. I'm not a therapist. But I know someone who once worked at a behavioral hospital. Scariest thing they told me was when a client admitted themselves after blacking out on Ambien. They woke up one morning. Covered in blood. And could not find the source. They went to the bathroom only to find that their poodle was disemboweled. Demonic words were written in blood on the walls. And there was a recording of them doing everything on their own. They swear they had no recollection. Nothing. The clinician called the family to gain further history and background. Evidently. That wasn't the person's first time mutilating animals and this was a pattern. The family said that they reviewed the video and it was a massacre. I. Yes and still scared of them. They were very delusional and a heavy addict. They decided our therapeutic engagement was a love story unfolding. Ended with the SWAT team showing up at the office when they showed up with a weapon and lost their shti when I wasn't there. They disappeared for a couple years. They appeared behind me on a bus one day and said I saw you with your daughter at your house she's really pretty. Then gave me my address. They are a known sx offender. I moved as soon as I could. I do intake for court ordered mental health services. Often it's not even the client themselves it's the parents or spouse of a client who on learning that that they will in fact actually have to work to change a behavior or have some inconvenience placed on them. Jimmy needs to be picked up from school at the end of the day and then be supervised at all times. Guns need to be removed from the home. Comma these people end up throwing a fit in my office or approaching me at a store months later with unknown and hostile intentions to either tell me services didn't work or everything is fine gee I guess we didn't need to do that all along. I used to be a therapist before this story. So basically I got this patient who witnessed his mom get stabbed by his father. After that happened he only started talking about gore and threatening people. I worked with him for a month and he started getting way better. I started to get comfortable in front of him and so did he. Then one day he comes into my office. He comes up to me and from his back he pulls out a knife. I barely have time to dodge the knife. The guard runs into the office and grabs the kid. He got sent to juvie and I quit after a week. TLDR. Almost got stabbed by a patient. 
my therapist ghosted me after cancelling my last three sessions with her last minute and no longer responded on her work email or phone. I'm very certain I disturbed her. And needless to say I'm not doing well knowing that my therapist ran from me gave up on me without explaining why after it took almost a decade to build the courage to seek help. That's fking awful and should not have happened. They can lose their license for abandoning patients if you felt the need to report them. Proper procedure is to take to the patient and then refer them to someone who specializes in what you need. I'm a therapist on my 12th year. I once had a patient referred to my clinic by a colleague of mine who himself was unable to get through to the client. I went through all kinda of methods with him. But find out after several sessions that the post didn't have a serious tag. The only client who scared me was one that was nice to me. He was awful to everyone else on the treatment team and would never comply with services until I came along. He always greeted me with a smile and wanted to know what I did in my spare time. Asked personal questions. I lied about my entire life. He would call me to chat about nothing sometimes. I could tell that it was all superficial. However. I would have to text my boss when I arrived at his home and when I was back at my car with the doors locked. When I got pregnant I begged to be removed from the case. In one of my first clinical placements I had a psychiatrist supervising me who would toss me cases without any meaningful review. One afternoon I went into a room to meet someone for the first time and was told they were anxious. The individual was floridly psychotic and informed me shortly after I walked in that he was scared for himself and others because he was a werewolf and would be transforming that evening. Apparently I did not respond quickly or meaningfully enough. Because in almost the next breath he informed me that I was not taking him seriously enough. Picked up the office lamp. And threatened to beat me to death with it. I'm a therapist. I've been in practice 14 years. Twice I have had clients threaten to murder me but I did not actually believe they would do it. I had another client who had killed someone and was not caught but he was super nice to me. Never really been scared by a client. I am a male therapist which does make a difference as around 80% of therapists are female. My first job as a therapist in community mental health we had no close time and were expected to accommodate any and all late session requests from clients with no security. It was insane. We had an incident occur with a co-worker her client exposed himself during session. At the next staff meeting we were berated and gaslit about safety you should park closer yet we would also get in trouble for parking closer and told those spots were for clients. Needless to say I only stayed there about 7 months. Daily crying and intense anxiety weren't working out for me. As a school counselor. There are kids who hit every red flag and who make the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I love them all unconditionally and will do anything to support them. But it's hard not to be afraid of what they may become or may do in the future. I was genuinely scared of a 17 year old client I had. They were adopted and then given back to child protective services. They told me in session they had an entire plan to burn their house down. Down to the date and the time. I was terrified. Senile old woman in the psych ward was screaming. Went to check in on her and she stared me dead in the eyes. Told me she was God. Then gave me the coldest most frightening smile I've ever seen to this day. I had this patient who was a mob boss from Jersey. He called me a WH Ray and threw money at me for trying to charge him for a session that he missed. As a tip in. Someone I went to school with murdered their therapist. I can only imagine the feelings therapists can have dealing with some of the people they do. My first job out of college was working with severely mentally ill kids. One of them was 9 but was as tall as me and weighed more than me. He came after me one day because he was mad at group and I had to call a code to get help from others in the building. I thought he was gonna hurt me badly. My friend, the psychologist, once had a patient that said he could stare into his soul. He apparently sat there for the whole session. Just staring at him with his eyes open. And never blinking. I'm so fking glad I'm not a psychologist. Not a therapist. But different area of healthcare. I recently had a patient punch me because he was mad his surgeon required a covered swab. 
I just walked away without saying anything because I didn't know what else to do. And was too afraid to piss him off even more. Fun times. In Medbud had a guy wanting Ritalin refills when there was repeatedly none in his blood or urine tox. When we told him we couldn't refill in the examination room he started yelling and becoming threatening. Guy was easily 300 ibs and 6 feet 5. In a tiny examination room it's safe to say there was genuine concern. I was doing in homework during my first internship. I was working with a 16 year old male diagnosed with schizophrenia. This kid was huge. Like 6 feet 9 and was jacked. He had assaulted 3 police officers that responded to a call about my client choking his mom. He threatened to our pay his sister and pulled a knife on her as well. He had threatened to our pay several other women. He also assaulted a worker at an inpatient facility. He broke the dude's nose. So my agency sent my ass to work with the kid, I'm 5 feet 1 and weigh like 95 lbs. While working with him he was pretty heavily sedated from all his meds when I met with him. So this made him slightly less scary. He got up several times during our session and would start pacing. Every time he got up my heart was racing. He was admitted to a group home so I only ended up meeting with him twice but this kid terrified me. An old friend of mine is a psychiatrist and works with teens. She said the most difficult cases are the ones where the big guys will get really angry and start throwing furniture. How she stands a chance against that? I'll never know. But good for her for trying to help. My first ever client was having a psychotic episode. Was homeless and had all of her belongings with her, a backpack filled with items and a duffel, and she proceeded to pull out a pair of kitty scissors and cut off all of her dreadlocks and lay them on the table in front of me while talking about needing to get rid of the voices she was hearing. This was all before I got her to even sign the paperwork as she and I talked enough to get the formalities finished and she decided to take the locks and put them in her bag like nothing abnormal was happening. I was just glad the scissors went away too. After that intake. She fell off the face of the earth. Never so heard from her again. I was fully prepared to ask her to hand over the sharps and put them somewhere out of reach until she was ready to leave but I didn't have to. Nothing surprises me at this point. I've been scared a few times but I don't think I've ever actually been in danger. I've experienced some scary things but I know the risk of the situation was actually low. I had a parent bring a gun into session once to illustrate how scared he was of his kid. That was scary due to the parent's decision making and choice to have a firearm in my office. I have been scared when a client stood up over me and got aggressive with their posture and tone but made no direct threats. I've worked with many folks who have done really awful stuff but they have been mostly good people who made terrible mistakes. For me. It's been important to pay attention to my intuition and see consultation. I've indefinitely been around very dangerous people and the tough pieces. The most dangerous folks are the ones you don't automatically get creeped out or threatened by. Was working with a kid I'd seen before. He used to only ever use hurtful words but generally wasn't assertive. This was after school had been closed a while and his schedule had been altered. For some reason he decided to protect by sticking me with a needle he had found. When he continued to try and aggress I suggested we meet with mom and talk about why he's having a hard time. He response was to pick up a box knife and threaten me with it. I've dealt with a lot of physical altercations with my students and clients but that was the first time I felt like I was legit in danger. Luckily I was able to get his parents who had heard the entire exchange. I used to do in home therapy visits. I had a prepubescent child pull a knife on me once. Everyone in the home, including that child, was okay after the ordeal. Cool and collected during the crisis. But I seriously cried like a baby afterwards when I was alone. She told me she'd kill me for trying to shrink her and pulled out a knife and sat there looked her in the eyes trying to assert dominance. I got out of that situation with a hole in my hand. She got one year in prison with a possibility of parole. I quit my job two months later. My boss understood. Oh hey. I can contribute. I had recently graduated and was working with kids with an array of developmental disabilities. There was one kid who was about 13. And he was a pretty big kid for his age. After a few sessions. 
It seemed like it wasn't too bad. Common behaviors while more frequent were no different than any other kid with a similar diagnosis. That was until I had to wear my knee brace one day. I have a bad knee. And sometimes a brace helps. The next session after. He kicked my bad knee and then tried to choke me. If he tried escaping or aggressing. He always remembered to go for my knee. We continued therapy for a few months. Until I had to leave for health, knee, reasons. Apparently I handled it well and the company I was with continued to pair me with known aggressive kiddos. I had to go the doctor for an unrelated reason. And I had so many cuts and bruises the nurse asked if my husband attacked me. I don't do therapy anymore. Yes. I had a patient once who was in waste management but he was a large and imposing man. It became more and more obvious over time that. In reality. He was a member of the New Jersey mob. I should have been more careful when he said he wanted a paisan for a therapist. My ex-husband and my own therapist warned me. But I once warned him about his abusive psychopathic mother and he almost killed me.